What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I want to take a look at two fights that took place in Chicago, Illinois. The first one was Thursday, October 31st, 1946, and the second one was December 20th, 1946. It happened between two dynamic fighters. One was a welterweight champion, and one was a former lightweight contender. I mean, this lightweight contender had fought the who's who of boxing. Can't wait to get into his career. Johnny Bratton was known as the Honey Boy. And when you thought about slick hair and shiny shoes, three-piece suit that had that swag, you thought about Johnny Bratton, known as the Honey Boy. He was born September 9th, 1927 in Little Rock, Arkansas. He died August 15th, 1993 in Chicago, Illinois. There was a time when there was an imposter who was going around Madison Square Garden pretending to be Johnny Bratton. But Johnny Bratton was some fighter, one of my favorite welterweight fighters of all times. He stood 5 foot 10 inches and he weighed 132 and a half and 157 and a half pounds. He was a holder of the NBA welterweight championship belt. Bratton fought the ring greats such as Freddie Dawn. Now Freddie Dawn was a very, very good fighter. He would face Charlie Fuseri from Irvington, New Jersey. Charlie Fuseri had faced Sugar Ray Robinson. That was Sugar Ray Robinson's first title defense in New Jersey. Fought him August 9, 1950. Bratton would be in there with Lester Felton. Eugene Hairston. Now, Eugene Hairston couldn't see and he couldn't hear. So Madison Square Garden would develop the red blinking lights in behalf of Eugene Hairston. And at that point, you didn't have any indications other than the 10-second bell that the round would come to an end. But they didn't have anything in place for fighters that couldn't hear. So Eugene Hairston had knocked out a fighter after the bell rang. And after the commission took a look at his case, they realized it wasn't his fault. And we had to come up with a mechanism that would give indications to fighters that can't hear. Because you had referees that couldn't hear as well. And that's when the red blinking lights came in place in Madison Square Garden. Thanks to Eugene Hairston. Danny Bang Bang Wapner, very good fighter, Vic Cardell. He was in there with Willie Joyce, two separate occasions, Chicago, Illinois. And Willie Joyce was a former lightweight contender and a current welterweight contender. We're going to get into that fight. Ralph Zanelli, another fantastic fighter. Cleo Shane, Laurent O'Teal. Now, Laurent O'Teal will give fits to Jake LaMotta. That would be Jake LaMotta's first title defense as middleweight champion. Jake LaMotta would defeat Marcel Sedan, 1949, for the middleweight championship belt. And he would have a good scare because Laurent Dottier was ahead on all scorecards. And in the last round, the last 13 seconds of that round, Lorenzo Tio would get hit with bodacious combinations by Jake LaMotta. And he'd be knocked out three seconds before the bell would ring. That would be one second longer than Melchick Taylor, Julio Cesar Chavez, March 17, 1990. Outstanding story. He'd be in here with Pierre Langlois, one of the greatest punches of Argentina. Fantastic fighter was Pierre Langlois. He being there with Brooklyn, New York's Joe Maselli. Maselli fought seven world champions. Now he being there with Cuba's Kid Gavilan. He fought him three times. Gavilan defeated Johnny Bratton to become the world welterweight champion. He'd be the first Cuban fighter ever to become a welterweight champion of the world. Johnny Bratton would be in there with Bushwitz, Georgia's, Trenton, New Jersey's Ike Williams. Ike Williams was a bodacious right-hand puncher. Phenomenal fighter was Ike Williams. He would have his wars with Bo Jack and Bob Montgomery. Ike Williams had an outstanding fight in 1948 with the great Bo Jack. That fight went back and forth for six rounds. And the fight was going fine until Bo Jack had the audacity to throw a bolo punch and take out Ike Williams' front side tooth. 
And Ike Williams just went crazy after that. And he threw combinations and got Bo Jack up against the ropes. And threw 48 on and answered punches. And he would knock out Bo Jack. And that would be one of the greatest lightweight fights in the history of the game. So Ike Williams was in there with them all. I have done profiles on Ike Williams. Type in Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fistic of Series and Ike Williams. And you'll learn a little bit more about Ike Williams. Now Johnny Bratton would be in there with Washington Penn's Sammy Angot, NBA lightweight champion. Sammy Angot would be one of the who's who of fighters that the average fighter would be in there with. He was a phenomenal fighter with Sammy Angot. He'd be in there with Augusta George's Bo Jack. Fought him twice. Bo Jack was a two-time lightweight champion. Had his wars with Bob Montgomery and Ike Williams and Henry Armstrong. You name him, he was in there with him. Bojack's real name was Sidney Walker. It was a story that Bojack was shining shoes and he came home. His grandmother is 112 years old. And the grandmother had a lot of values. And at that time, the last name was everything. And Bojack's real name was Sidney Walker. And when he came home, he just came home crying. The grandmother wanted to know what he was crying for. She had a plate of food waiting for him at the dinner table. And when he explained to his grandmother what he was crying for, she told him to go to the bathroom, wash his face, take off his shoes, and take off his shirt. And when he came out, she beat him half to death and told him no walker runs from no one. That was Bojack's grandmother. And Bojack, from that point on, never ran from another guy or fighter again. He was in there with Sam Bernardino's Albert Chalky Wright, former featherweight champion. Chalky Wright would lose his title to Willie Pep. Willie Pep, they call him Will the Wiss from Hartford, Connecticut. He was a fantastic defensive fighter, was Willie Pep. Johnny Bratton would be in there with Louisiana's Joe Brown. They called him Old Bones. He would become lightweight champion of the world when he defeated Wallace Bud Smith. And he would lose his crown to Carlos Ortiz. He would be in there with Del Flanagan and Chico Verona. He'd be in there with Newark, New Jersey's Johnny Saxton. Fought him twice. He would lose his world welterweight championship belt to Johnny Saxton. Johnny Saxton would be a two-time welterweight champion. Johnny Saxton would lose his welterweight championship strap to Tony DeMarco, as well as Carmen Basilio. Johnny Bratton would also face San Antonio's Texas, Bobby Dykes, former welterweight contender. He was a southpaw, six foot tall, and he was a very, very good fighter was Bobby Dykes. Willie Joyce, born September 2nd, 1917 in Chicago, Illinois. He fought out of Gary, Indiana, and he died December 5th, 1996. He was 90, 79 years of age at the time of his death. Excuse me, it was Gary, Indiana. Is where he died. He stood five foot six inches and he weighed 133 to 146 pounds. It was managed by Izzy Klein. And he had total bouts of 103, 71 wins, 21 losses, 10 draws, 16 knockouts with one no contest. And he'd be in there with Milbert, Texas, Lou Jenkins, former lightweight champion. He fought him three times. And Lou Jenkins would lose his lightweight crown to Lou Ambers. They actually defeated Lou Ambers for the crown. He be in with Atkins, Georgia, Loser Slugger White. Loser Slugger White was a phenomenal fighter himself. He was in there with the who's who of boxing. He was in there with St. Louis, Mississippi's Henry Armstrong. Fought him four occasions. Armstrong was a three weight division world champion and held on his belts simultaneously. He would have the featherweight and a welterweight and lightweight championship strap. He'd be in there with San Bernardino's Albert Chalky Wright, former featherweight champion. He would defeat Joey Archibald for that crown and lose it to Willie Pep. He'd be in there with Hartford, Connecticut's Willie Pep, two-time featherweight champion. He had his wars, a four-fight occasion series with Sandy Sadler. He would defeat Chalky Wright, November 20th, 1942, for the featherweight championship crown. Unfortunately for Willie Pep, he would suffer a plane crash, but he would come back and regain his title. One of the greatest defensive fighters was Willie Pep. Willie Joyce would be in here with Garfield, New Jersey's Tippy Larkin. Fought him three times. 
Tippy Larkin was a lightweight champion. He would lose his crown to the great Bo Jack. Willie Joyce would also be in there with Chicago, Illinois' Johnny Bratton on two separate occasions. And that's the fight we're looking at now. He'd be in there with Brunswick, New Jersey's, Trent, New Jersey's, Ike Williams for them separate occasions. Ike Williams was the hardest lightweight puncher known to man. Phenomenal fighter was Ike Williams. Augusta George's Bo Jack, former two-time lightweight champion. He would face Bobby Ruffin. Pittsburgh, California's Jackie Wilson. He was a welterweight contender. Chester Slider twice. So I got to tell you, these two fighters was unbelievable. They could fight. Remember, Johnny Bratton had his war with Gil Turner. I have Gil Turner, one of the greatest Philadelphia fighters of all times. He was in there with Kid Gavilan. Kid Gavilan was a phenomenal Cuban fighter. He was the developer of the double bolo punch. He would punch their body and punch to the head in a bolo fashion. One of the fastest hands and feet of all of boxing. Kid Gavilan had his wars with Sugar Ray Robinson. But that Philadelphia fight with Robinson and Gavilan was a ring classic. So Thursday, October 31st, 1946, Chicago, Illinois. Willie Joyce would lose to Johnny Bratton. Johnny Bratton had a fighting record at that time, 21 wins, 6 losses, 1 draw, 1 knockout. He was 19 years of age. He stood 5 foot 10 inches. Willie Joyce had a fighting record of 70 wins, 18 losses. He had 8 draws with 16 knockouts. December 20th, Chicago, Illinois, 1946. Willie Joyce would lose 10 round decision to Johnny Bratton. At that time, Johnny Bratton had a career record. 22, 6 losses, 1 draw, and 10 knockouts. Joyce had 71 wins, 19 losses. Ryan Joyce with 16 KOs. And both fights were identical. Both men threw very, very fast combinations. Bratton went down twice. Willie Joyce stayed on his feet the entire fight. And he showed why he was a veteran. He'd been in with every fighter that you can think of. Was Willie Joyce. Both fights were sensational. And I just wanted to go through their careers and their fights. Right here on the Museum of the Forgotten Fistigov series. So thanks for hanging in there with me. Salute to my subscribers. Salute to Johnny Bratton and Willie Joyce. Two of the finest fighters in a boxing game. Salute.